Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part two of my Logic Pro 10 201 course. In this video, I'm going to show you how to enter in and edit MIDI notes in the Piano Roll Editor. So in the previous video, I just played in a real basic chord idea, and I showed you how to layer up different uh, software instruments. I'm just going to collapse that folder there. Now, there's a couple different ways to open the Piano Roll Editor. One, you can just double click on any MIDI region and it'll open up the Piano Roll Editor down here. You can also press P to toggle the Piano Roll Editor, or you can press Command-4 and it'll open up the Piano Roll in its own window. I'll also hit Command-W to close that back out. So I'll just work down here. There's also a few different ways to zoom the MIDI data that's in the Piano Roll. Uh, one way to do this is to click on the background, hit Z, it'll zoom everything to fit the window, or you can press Command left and right or Command up and down to zoom uh, horizontally and vertically. So I'm just gonna click on the background, hit Z to zoom everything. Another quick navigation tool are the left and right greater than, less than brackets. This will really help when you're trying to jump around bar to bar. And one thing you'll notice here is that these notes are slightly ahead of the bar line. So let's quantize them to the bar line. So right now these are all whole notes. And if you select all these notes just by pressing Command A, you can go over to your time quantize menu here, click on this, and there's a bunch of different quantization values. Now, the ones that we're concerned with are the ones at the top here. So one one note is a whole note. This is a half note, a quarter note, an eighth note, 16th note, 32nd note, and a 64th note. Now, most of these are probably going to work. Like You'll see that a quarter note works just fine. But since I have all whole notes here, I'm going to click whole note, and it'll quantize all of these to the bar line. We'll talk a bit more about quantizing uh, a couple more videos down the road. Now notice that if I select a note, you hear the note. You can actually turn this off if you click here. This turns off the MIDI output so you can select notes without hearing them. Sometimes it can get kind of annoying if you're trying to edit MIDI notes and you make a selection and all of a sudden you're hearing all of those notes playback. So when you select notes, you can hover over the left or right side to trim up the left or right side of the note. You can also click and drag up or down to uh, transpose. Uh, another quick way to transpose is if you select notes or a single note, you can press option up or down, and this will transpose the notes up or down by a semitone or a half step at a time. And you can also press shift option up and down, and you can shift the notes up or down by a full octave. Also note that when I move a note or if I trim a note that the edits snap to the grid. And this is because I have snap mode turned on. I have a snap mode selected. So you can click on this and you can turn off your snap to grid. Or I like to use the key command, command G. This is just a real quick way to turn on or off your grid snap. I'm going to work with it on, but I'm going to choose a different value. I'm going to choose division instead of smart. Smart is actually using some smaller deviations smaller than my grid division. Right now my grid division is set to a 16th note. So whatever you have selected here, this is going to determine what uh, grid division you snap to if you're in division mode. So now if I try this, I'll only snap to 16th notes on the grid. Now one thing I like to do is I like the front end and back end of my MIDI notes to be the same length, especially when I'm playing chords like this. But if I go through and adjust each individual MIDI note, this is going to take a while. This can be uh, kind of cumbersome. So there's a trick to getting rid of these gaps in between your chords. So after you quantize, you can select all of the notes, go up to edit over here, go down to trim, and there's two options I really want to show you. One is called note end to following notes, also known as force legato, and the key command for this is shift backslash. And then this one's called uh, Note to Remove Overlaps with Adjacent, uh, which is just backslash. So if I press Shift Backslash for Force Legato, it'll give me this dialog that says some of these uh, overlap notes appear like chords. I'll just click Shorten. And look what it does. It gets rid of all of those gaps in between all of those chords. Now, if you have a situation like this where some of the notes are overlapping, you can use that other edit feature under Trim, and it's Note to Remove Overlaps with Adjacent or just Backslash. I'll click Shorten, and it takes the notes that are overlapping and shortens them automatically for you. So I often find myself, uh, when I'm working with MIDI and recording in MIDI with my MIDI controller, I'll hit backslash, then I'll hit shift backslash 
and this will get rid of all of my overlaps and force legato all of the notes in the passage. Next, I'll go through all of the edit tools in the Piano Roll Editor. So there's two main uh, edit tools you can pick from. The one on the left is your main edit tool, and the one on the right is your secondary edit tool. This is uh, an edit tool that only shows up when you hold command. Now, typically, I always keep the pointer tool as my main tool, and then I'll put something else in as my secondary tool, as my command click tool. So we've already been using the pointer tool. That's just the one that you can select notes with, trim notes, move them around. Um, the pencil tool allows you to enter in new notes. And if you click and drag while you enter in no new notes, you can adjust the length of the notes. The eraser tool just erases notes. So it's pretty simple. Uh, I don't really use it much because you can just select notes and press delete and it does the same thing. The next tool is the finger tool. Um, again, I kind of don't really use this tool much. It's just a trim tool. It will not move the notes up or down. It'll only trim the notes left and right. Um, and most of the time, I just use the pointer tool for that. The scissors tool is a way to split notes into two. And there's a cool little feature with, uh, with the uh, scissors tool where if you select an area where you want to cut a note up and then hold option, you get this extra little option, this little plus sign, and what it does is it will cut up the note at the interval of the very first cut. So as you can see there, I hovered over an eighth note from the beginning of the note, held option while I cut, and it split this into eighth notes. So this is kind of cool if you want to select a bunch of notes and maybe separate them into shorter rhythms, just like so. So now instead of whole notes, I have sort of these uh, stamped quarter notes. And the glue tool does the opposite of the scissors tool. It just glues notes back together. So I can take these four notes on each of these chords and glue them back together into one whole note. The mute tool allows you to mute notes without actually deleting them. So I find this useful if you want to try something out with or without an extra note, but you don't want to actually delete the note. Instead of using the mute tool, you can select a note and press Control M, and it'll do the same thing as the mute tool. You can even select whole selections of notes and then press Control M again to bring the note back in. The quantize tool quantizes notes based on the quantization value that's set over here. So if I click on notes with the quantize tool, it just quantizes them to a whole note right now. Typically, you never have to really use the quantize tool because you can actually just select notes and press Q on your keyboard, and this will do the same thing as the quantization tool, and it follows the quantization that you've set over here as well. The velocity tool allows you to adjust the velocity of the note from 1 all the way up to 127. Now, not only does the color of the note change as you adjust the velocity, but note that the line, the little bar in the middle of the note, also changes. You can also adjust the velocity of notes without the velocity tool just by adjusting the velocity slider over here. You can actually select multiple notes and adjust their velocity as well. Now, the thing is that each note's going to maintain its relative velocity difference between it and the next note. So if you hold option, this will actually conform all of these notes to the same velocity. So that's a quick way to do that. The zoom tool is just a way to zoom in. If you drag over an area with it, it zooms in. If you click again, it zooms out. I hardly ever use it because I'm usually just using command left and right and command up and down. The Automation Select and Automation Curve tools I'll talk about a bit later when I start talking about automating controllers within synthesizers. And lastly, we have the Brush tool, but I don't think the Brush tool is going to be well used by uh, this instrument. Let's actually create a new software instrument. I'm going to load up the Drum Machine Designer on this. I'll choose the Futura Kit from the library here. And then I'll right click in the arrange area to create an empty MIDI region. Just need to create something maybe about four bars in length. And I'll double click on that to open up the piano roll editor. Now note that when you load a drum kit, it actually shows each instrument on the keyboard because in a lot of cases, you don't necessarily need to know whether a note is a C or a C sharp to know what sound it is. You just need to know what sound it actually is. But typically kick drum starts down here on C1. So using my pencil tool, I'm going to create just sort of like a basic uh, drum pattern here. So I can repeat that just by dragging over all of that 
and pressing Command R. And I'll press Command R two more times to duplicate that out. Okay, so getting back to the brush tool. What the brush tool does is it creates MIDI notes based on whatever you have the quantization value set to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create sort of like a rapid, almost trap style, hi-hat beat using 16th notes and 32nd notes. I'm gonna just kind of go back and forth between these two options. And I may even use a, a 16th note triplet, the 124 option down here as well. So I'll start off with just 16th notes. And let's find our hi-hat, like a tight closed hi-hat here. Yeah. So if you click and drag with this, it re repeats the notes. So that's kind of basic. Um, let's do something different in here. Let's maybe switch to a 32nd note. There we go. And then maybe that's a little too fast. Let's go to the 16th note triplet here. So you can use the brush tool and then jump around between different quantization values to draw in various repeating rhythmic uh, values. So that's what I find the brush tool most useful for. So this is just a basic drum pattern with a really basic, simple uh, hi-hat uh, pattern that I drew in with the brush tool. Now, if you know that the notes that are within your MIDI region are the only notes you're going to use, you can actually click here, and what this will do is it'll collapse this down, and in collapse mode, you only see the notes in the MIDI region that you're actually using in your MIDI sequence. One last feature I want to show you is called step input. So what I'm going to do first is create a new MIDI region up here on my synth group stack, and I'll just make this four bars long. And then what I'll do is go up to Window and go down to Show Step Input Keyboard. You can also press Option Command K. And the Step Input Keyboard allows you to choose various rhythmic values. So we have whole note, half note, quarter note, eighth note, and so forth and so on. I'm going to go with a whole note. And you can turn on Step Input by clicking here. Now what Step Input does is it allows you to enter in notes with your MIDI controller without having to play, play them in like with a click track during playback. So this makes it really easy because you can enter in notes or chords one at a time and take your time to get your hand position right. It also keeps us from having to do those trim features that I was uh, using earlier because I can enter in uh, chords that are exactly a whole note in length. So there's one. And note that velocity does matter. Um, one thing to keep in mind here too is that if you play in notes like arpeggiated like this, if the notes overlap, they'll still show up as a chord. If you want the notes to be separate, you have to intentionally put some space between the notes as you play them. And if I wanna switch my musical value to something like an eighth note to go a little faster, So we'll be using step input uh, quite a bit in the future to enter in notes quickly without having to play them in during playback. All right, guys, so that is the piano roll editor that's entering in notes and using the editing tools and using step input. In the next video, I'll show you how to use the piano roll editor to figure out different scales and then use those scales to figure out different types of chords and chord progressions even if you don't know any music theory. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. You can also check me out on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.